You are listening to Studio MacGyver's Dragon Ball and Video Game Podcast. Studio MacGyver, and you are listening to Studio MacGyver's Dragon Ball and Video Game Podcast. Welcome to the show, guys. If you're new to the podcast, welcome to the show. We do this every fucking Monday, same bad time, same bad channel. If you're into video games, if you are into nerd culture, if you're into anime, then you've come to the right place. We talk about all of that shit here. And we have a doozy of a show today, guys. A lot to talk about. Capcom has a huge and I do mean fucking colossal four year plan that has been leaked on the Internet. I'm going to get into that. I have some gripes about some of it, but the majority of it, guys, is fucking amazing. And I'm going to I can't wait to get into it. Also, we have a new. Yes, a new 007 game in the works. Also going to be talking about Sony responding to Xbox and their game pass. Yes, uh, it's getting real, guys. It, 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 I've always known this and it has always been real out here in these digital streets. And now you are seeing the results. Uh, also, Cyberpunk. We got some Cyberpunk 2077 news, man. I love I love, love, love this game. I cannot wait to get my hands on it. So many things happening with this game. I'm going to dive into some things that, you know, came became apparent uh, in the last few days. I'm going to talk about some of that and also. I also want to talk about another rumor that I think is true and I think is going to happen. And it's regarding Sony, Sony making deals, Sony doing things, you know, what I'm saying in the dark, uh, you know what I mean? Doing strange things with butter. I don't know what the fuck these guys are doing, <laughs> but they're making moves. OK, and that's a good thing. And I think as I think 2021 is going to be a beautiful year uh, when it comes to video games, man. I think we're going to get I mean, it's just going to I think it's just going to be a way better year than 2020 was. I think we can all argue that anything moving forward from 2020 is going to be better than 2020. Um, honestly, but it, it feels good to know a lot of the things that I know, a lot of this information that I have. And especially as a gamer and, and somebody who's into games and who's an anime fan and all of those things, it's just going to be a great year. We got a lot of things to look forward to, man. And, and I cannot wait to talk about a lot of this stuff with you guys. Also, some Assassin's Creed uh, Valhalla news. Well, technically, I call it an update because, guys, when I say I've been playing this and nothing else and I have been doing nothing else, I mean that. I seriously fucking mean that. And I cannot wait to talk about that. Um, I'm so excited to be talking about this game. This game has really, really surprised me in a few different ways. I knew it was going to be good, but, man, I mean, I have been putting some time in this game i have over 80 hours now clocked into this game and the game hasn't even been out two weeks yet so that should tell you something okay that should tell you a little bit of what i've been doing when i'm not on this microphone when you guys uh, are wondering what i might be doing this past couple of weeks guys i have been on this game and pretty much nothing else has been my life and that's what happens sometimes when you have these big titles that come out or games that are um highly anticipated open world RPG type of experiences, man, you know, you lose yourself in these type of games. At least I know I do. And that's why I'm like, yo, November is going to be a crazy month. It, it already is because of Valhalla. And then also coming up when we have December 10th, man, we have the, the game, the one that everybody has been waiting, uh, all the hype, everything behind this game, just so many things we're looking forward to. And, and, and I cannot wait to go balls deep in this game as well. Uh, to be honest with you guys, with them moving the date to December 10th, that was probably one of the best things that could have happened to me personally, because I need this time to play Valhalla. Like I, I, I 80 hours in and I may be about halfway done. OK, um, and that's where I'm at. I mean, if I look on my my PlayStation uh, four list or whatever of completion rate, I mean, I think I'm like 23 percent, some shit like that. Uh, now, I'm, I'm assuming that's like a lot of the other things done within the game. But story wise, I'm looking about halfway. I'm looking about a little bit more than halfway done. OK, but like I said, the story, does it doesn't end with the story. 
uh, with these type of games. The game kind of, in a sense, kind of just begins, uh, you know, I want to get the story done and then a few things in between. I mean, I got my armor set. I got the things that I uh, wanted most in the game, everything. Well, there's a couple of things I still want to do, a couple of um, other um, items I want in the game, but I'm going to wait till end game to get most of those, I think. And uh, we'll go from there. But I'm having a ball. Needs to say I'm having a ball playing it and I'm enjoying myself thoroughly with this game. And since I'm just continually talking about it, I might as well just stay on this subject. But the game is uh, aside from the bugs uh, and in a couple of times that it crashed on me. I mean, the game is fucking excellent. I mean, I last week gave it a nine point five. I'm sticking to that nine point five score. Like I said, the, the, the five points, the point five that it's missing is because of the bugs, because it does have bugs in the game. Any game this huge, you're going to end up having bugs from time to time. That's just, you know, what it's going to be. You're going to get bugs. Things are going to happen. Um, you know, I say every eight to 10 hours on, you know, the game crashes on me. That That's about the average um, crash rate of, of a game, you know, but. Like I said, this is a multi-platform game, so that's to be expected somewhat. I'm really curious to see how it plays on the next-gen consoles, which, you know, I can't wait to find that out. Maybe a second playthrough, you know, would happen. Uh, but, I, you know, I'll get to that when I get my system, whenever they become available. And, you know, it's, it's depressing even talking about that. It, it really is depressing when you talk about wanting a next gen system and not being able to make that happen because not because you don't have the money, but because you just can't find one. You know what I mean? So, uh, but at the same time, like I said, this game has curved my appetite as well as cyberpunk is going to do the same thing. So that those two games are going to get me through 2020 easily and into 2021. And then like, you know, late January, early February is when I'd probably end up picking up a PS five. That's when it'll probably become available, you know, where they won't be <laughs> impossible to grab. Um, and then we should be good. You know what I mean? And, and we'll move on from there and then we can worry about other titles and other games or even playing, uh, replaying some of these other games on these, uh, set systems. So that's where I am. That's what I'm doing right now. <clears throat> a couple of my, <clears throat> excuse me, a couple of my listeners has, you know, have recently come up on some games. I was looking at one of my, <clears throat> one of my boys on Instagram, uh, Windsor. Uh, if you're listening, <laughs> he posted his uh, PS5, uh, actually his PS5 controller, and he was talking about how good it felt. And, you know, they look like they are definitely next level as far as how they how they feel. They're they're a little bit closer to the Xbox. They're kind of like a hybrid. They're not all the way. They're not as big as Xbox, but they're close. Xbox has always had a dope controller for the most part. And, you know, most people who play games or experience the Xbox controller, you know, can can tell you that. Uh, but the PlayStation 5's controller looks really, really comfortable. And uh, I really am envious of this guy. Uh, he, he doesn't stay in the U.S., if I'm not mistaken. But, you know, he got his he got his PS5 and hey, I'm happy for him. So <laughs> if you listen to this show, man, hey, you're lucky, bro. Um, I'll see you soon, though. I definitely will see you soon and can't wait to start passing out uh, gamer tags. Because I'm going to have to change my gamer tag on the Xbox when I get the uh, <laughs> the Xbox Series X because my son has completely taken over, guys. And I mean completely. OK, he's been online every day for the past almost two weeks now, and he's been using my gamer tag. So, yeah, that's a wrap for that. I'm going to have to um, I'm going to have to have a new name. OK, and it'll probably be something like Warm Butter 79 or some shit like that. No bullshit. But yeah, um, be looking forward to that. I'll definitely keep you guys posted on all of that stuff. Also, I'm talking about it. Uh, you know, like I said, 2021 is going to be a brand new year. You know, start fresh. Want to try new things, do new things. The website is coming. The website is coming very, very soon, guys. It may even be out before 2021, before January. So be looking out for that. StudioMacGyver.com. It's coming, guys. I'm going to have the podcast there. Of course, it's going to be the main hub of the podcast. You can stream. You can download the episodes there. You're going to be able to also uh, partake in merch because I'm getting a lot of comments and recommendations that I should just 
create some merch and then put some merch out there. But I'm happy to announce to you guys that I am in the works. I am currently working on merch for the podcast. I got a lot of dope shit coming, guys. This butter is included in a lot of it. <laughs> so I'm sure you guys would appreciate that. My longtime listeners also endo sticks. Um, also, uh, what else do we got here? We I got a lot of things that I'm working on uh, as far as you know, merch is concerned. So be looking out for that guys. That's really what's holding up the website. Once the merch is, is, you know, done and complete, then everything else is going to be pretty quick. So be looking out for that currently working on the merch, man. I think you guys are going to appreciate some of this shit. It's going to be crazy. So yeah, just wanted to let you guys know on that to all my, uh, my big time listeners. All right, guys talked about Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Let me talk about it just a little bit more before I move on. I have 80 plus hours in the game and Jesus, man, it, like I said, each one, it seems like got better and better. And I'm having a ball playing this. I, I, matter of fact, when I get done with this podcast, I will definitely be jumping back on uh, I, I, my game. My PlayStation 4 is in rest mode now. And, you know, it's just waiting. I had to stop mid mission. I was in between a mission, but that's cool because you can stop and turn right back on and jump right in. That's the cool thing about it. So, like I said, I'm, I'm chopping at the bit to get back into it. Uh, I just really love this character, Avor. I picked the male version uh, last game, which was Odyssey. I went with um, the female character because she just seemed more interesting. Um, and, you know, I just go with the mo most interesting character. It doesn't matter what, you know, male or female. If you're more interesting, that's the one I want to go with. But. I'm just having a ball. I'm just having so much fun with this game. And if you haven't played it yet, guys, definitely check it out. If you're weary, if you're worried um, about if it's going to be worth your time or whatever, I I'm here to tell you that it is definitely worth your time. It is one of the games that, you know, is truly worth more than what it you paid for it. I mean, in the Cyberpunk, I feel it's going to be that same way. Anytime you put over, anytime you can put over 30 hours in the game, 30 plus hours, I consider that a win. OK, and I've already done 80 hours. OK, and I estimate I'd probably do another 40 to 50 hours before I'm done with the story. And that's not even being done with everything else. So, uh, you know, I am completely satisfied with what, you know, what I paid for it. I got my money's worth. Definitely got that done. And like I said, there's going to be more. Um, content coming. So yeah, I'm excited, man. I'm, I'm very happy and pleased. I don't want to say anything, anything really any more about the game that I've already said, except for just go play it. All right. Now <clears throat> let's talk about cyberpunk. I want to talk a little bit about cyberpunk because, you know, we all know most of us know about cyberpunk, even if a lot of you guys don't even plan on playing it. I think it's been out there. If you're into video games, you've seen cyberpunk somewhere you've seen an ad you've seen a commercial you've seen something and cyberpunk is that game uh I, more news keeps coming out as time goes by and i get more excited each time i see the news this is going to be one of the deepest rpgs like ever um i saw some breakdowns i saw uh some of the things that how the game breaks down you know your character and how you build that character. And when I say it's insane, it is fucking insane. I have never seen anything like this. Okay. So I cannot fucking wait to figure out everything. And I had to get a strategy guide. Okay. I didn't even know they were doing strategy guides, but I went to game, start to pre-order the game. And they said, Oh, do you want the strategy guide? I said, what? They're doing strategy guides. I miss strategy guides. I miss the days of strategy guides. man. And if, if anything, just to have it for a collector's purposes, you know, I went ahead and got the uh, got the um, strategy guide. But I mean, I'm ex I'm just so excited for this game. Haven't been excited for a game like this in quite some time. And I can't wait, man. I mean, for them to make a strategy guide for this game is telling you also that this is going to be a crazy, crazy deep game. All right. There's going to be so many different things um, going on in this game that they had to make a strategy guide for this. Yeah, it, it, that's insane. So. Yeah, I, who I had to get it. I had to get a strategy guide. Uh, I think I'm going to try to play it without using the strategy guide first playthrough. I'm really, really going to try. But, you know, I can't promise that I'm going to be able to do that. It's sitting right here. It's going to be sitting right here in front of me. So, you know, I might have to open the pages. 
But anyway, Cyberpunk 2077, guys, there's been some news that surfaced. If anybody's worried about the release date being changed or being set back again, rest assured that that is not the case. It is actually definitely coming out December 10th. OK, that is it. It, it, it is not getting pushed back. Um, and the reason why I'm saying this and I can claim this is because there have been retail PS4 copies um, leaked pictures, actually uh, warehouse pictures. Some employee from some warehouse <laughs> has actually taken a shot and posted some shit and basically said, hey, it's almost here, guys. It's, it's coming. And he basically posted a copy of a PS4 version of the game. And. He took another snapshot of for people who might not have believed him, maybe thought it was photoshopped or whatever, took a picture of the back of it. And then he also took a picture of a bundle, basically a palette, if you will, full of PS4 versions of this game. It was a lot of them. They had a slip cover over it, a nice, you know, kind of poppy yellow to it. Uh, and you know, it comes with all the bells and whistles that CD project red is known for doing. They basically are, you basically paying for a deluxe edition of the game. That's what it feels like compared to everybody else who puts games out because they give you posters. They give you even a soundtrack. You get all kinds of shit with this game. It's going to be a double disc game. It's supposed to be 70 gigs for PlayStation four players. I don't know about everybody else, but if you're a PS4 owner like myself, be prepared to play uh to download 70 to have 70 gigs of space that, that's how big the game is um yeah but it's real december 10th is coming so please don't you know don't worry about that not happening or getting pushed back so it, it's out here the main reason they said that they had to push the date back was because of the day zero patch and le which leads me into the next segue because there's been leaked gameplay now OK, since the game is out there, there's been people who has who have gotten their hands on on it. And there's been actually a person or two who has actually tried to stream it or tried to post some of the gameplay. And, you know, I'm not going to watch any of that because I don't want to be spoiled, even though the game is huge as fuck, which I'm going to get to in two shakes of a lamb's tail. Uh, but, you know, it's, people are getting the game in their hands now. People are getting the game. So if you see footage on accident or if you stumble upon some footage and if you stumble upon choppy footage, then, you know, don't get too nervous. Because, like I said before, the main reason why these guys are putting it out December 10th is because they're working on a day zero patch, which is going to remedy a lot of other things, a lot of bugs and things of that nature. So they just want to make sure all these things are good. And apparently the PS4 version, um, there's there's footage that CD Projekt Red is going to be coming out with shortly to show us gameplay and everything apparently man the shit looks good uh it looks dreamy even on the ps4 so that's a definite um relief because you know a lot of people are probably worried about oh this and this and that uh the weakest system they have to you know i guess uh prep for is going to be the xbox one s okay that's the weakest one considerably weaker than the ps4 the base ps4 at that so they're just probably working on all the kinks all the bugs and there's always a day one patch now guys if you're not familiar with how games are done uh in the days the age we live in now there's always a day one patch for pretty much any game uh, that comes out whether it could be very small minute but it can also be very huge and and game changing so you know it's just part of the game it's the nature of the beast now that's where you know the area we live in so it's cool uh, a lot of people playing the game now who have it. I mean, you know, I'm sure it's playable, but uh, you probably want some of those bugs to be taken care of. And I would, uh, you know, rest assured day one, it should be a lot of that should be remedied. And then, of course, they usually slide out other updates throughout, you know, the first few months of the release. Little other things that may have been missed or people are commenting about and they end up finding it and, and doctor up and, and able to fix. So, you know, no big, no, no harm, no foul. I'm just excited to play this. I cannot fucking wait. Um, but on more news, as far as the, uh, the, the length of the game. The length of the game. There's the, the so the lead QA tester on this. All right, he played the game. He's been playing the game uh, like a motherfucker. He's played on Nomad, the Nomad story arc. I think there's the Nomad, there's the Street Kid, and there's also the Corporate. Okay, um, basically storyline you can start from, and each one you pick does 
you know, start you differently and, and, and insert you into the, to the world a little bit different. And he went nomad, which is, um, somebody who was, wasn't from night city, but ended up navigating to night city to, to, to try to make a, a living or a life or a name for themselves. But anyway, on his nomad playthrough, uh, and if you guys don't know what a QA is, it, it's basically somebody who basically tests the game for us, gets the shit ready for us to uh, play it. You know what I mean? And, you know, throughout his playthrough, he may find, you know, a handful of bugs and those will be addressed. And there's another QA tester, you know, who does the same thing and he may find different bugs and so on and so forth. So they have a number of guys who do this. And then when all the bugs are collected, they go in and pinpoint those and, and they clear those up. And then anything that comes up prior after that those are usually taken care of in the months to come with future um future updates but that's he's the lead qa so basically he played the he's playing through the whole game right now now keep in mind he has not even finished the whole game as of his comments he was sitting somewhere about around 173 hours okay that is where he was at and he had not completed the story yet and look, I knew this was going to happen. Now, I'm sure you can finish the story in less time. You could probably finish the story in maybe 60 hours if you just did everything with story straight through. You could probably do that. But most people who play games like this, you're, it's not going to happen. You're going to end up falling on the beaten path, fall, and, you know, getting into other things and getting lost in the world. And that's what you're supposed to do. That's how it's, it's meant to be played. That's how it was made, in my opinion. Uh, to to figure out you know your own way and and the things you love and hate to do in this game, so I'm excited about that because I knew it was going to be somewhere in that ballpark as far as you know before you complete the actual game. I love games like that, huge games, uh, single player experiences, RPGs, open world. I that's my forte. That that is my favorite genre of game. If you guys are new to the show. You're learning this now, but most of my listeners know this about me. That is what I like. That is what I crave the most. And yeah, man, because you can play them in any climate. You don't have to be online to play them. Um, and, you know, I'm an introvert by nature. You know, I'm not really a people person all that much. I like to tend to I tend to stick to myself and I like to stay in my little bubble, which is this man cave, which is, you know, surrounding me with games and, you know, I, I, my anime and, and my figures and my nerdy. Um, little shit that I have around me that that's typically the world I like to live in the bubble. And, you know, these are my games. These are the things I like to do. So I'm completely astonished by the length of the game and I'm, I couldn't be happier. I cannot wait to get into it. I, me personally, 200, <laughs> 250, you know, on this game easy. Okay. So I'm excited about that, but just thought I'd let you guys know that. And uh, yeah, get ready for a long, you know, play through, get ready for an epic journey. I'm going to be trying to do uh, some content on this game uh, with the character I create. I'm going to give him his name. I mean, of course, his name is V, but I want to give him something along with that. And then I want to do some uh, I want to do some videos, man. I want to do some stuff on the channel, give you guys some uh, some love. And you guys might, you know, poke your head in from time to time and and see what I've been doing out here in these uh, digital streets. OK. Anyway, that is enough for the cyberpunk news. Let's move on. And I want to talk about Sony. Yes, Sony. Um, but before I do Sony, let's talk about a franchise that has technically been out of the loop for quite some time. And it's heyday came about on the Nintendo 64. And I'm talking about GoldenEye 007. Now, a lot of you guys aren't old enough to know about this game, but this game was a fucking classic as still is considered a classic, even though we're it's aged pretty badly, but it's still a dope game. I have to basically announce if you guys haven't heard, there is a new golden eye game in development. Okay. And that kind of took me aback. It kind of fucked me up a little bit. Cause I just wasn't expecting that. And that's the beauty of the next gen and just gaming period. You are you those beautiful surprises that you get. You know what I mean? A long lost franchise, maybe, or something that you never thought you'd see again. And you finally get, you know, confirmation on this stuff. And it just blows your mind. It's a gift and a curse. It's bittersweet because now that you know that it's coming, the next part is the hardest, which is waiting. And then as you get information and videos and all this stuff about the game, it 
it kind of <laughs> it's kind of like a slow burn. You know what I mean? Like a slow torture, you know, kind of like cyberpunk is like how they kept pushing it back. And, I, you know, it, it just fucking burned the fuck out of me. So it's all good. Don't get it twisted. But to know that there's another, you know, 007 game coming is definitely a breast breath. I'm sorry, breast <laughs> breath of fresh air. I've been drinking, guys. So uh, bear with me. Uh, you know, I, I, I had a few glasses of wine to try to relax a little bit tonight and before I started recording. So just bear with your kid, bear with your boy. OK, anyway, the game is going to be developed by IO Interactive. If you guys don't know who that is, it's the same people who did the Hitman series okay i love hitman love the series man and hitman 3 is coming out in january if i'm not mistaken 2021 so looking forward to that hitman 3 what that's going to be about hopefully we get it's a single player game and it's not in set pieces like they've been doing i I really hate that format uh you know trying to bird feed us you know by mission by mission i don't like that but hey i'm just happy to announce we're getting another game and i think they're going to do great things with this game like i said they're working on hitman games so they're doing great things, I think. Um, no, I know. OK, the Hitman franchise is definitely uh, one of the best or one of the better, better teams out here, studios out here. So, yeah, doing this justice, I think, is going to be pretty easy for these guys. And, you know, we'll see soon enough. There is technically no release date on this right now. But I do know that the game, as far as the premise and the story, it takes place around and this is like one of the nobody's ever done this this is basically going to be a origin story for james bond the very first james bond origin story okay i'm surprised movies hadn't done that yet you know that that's kind of surprising to me of all those james bond movies they've never done an origin story how he became james bond but they're doing it in the game so i think that's that alone is going to make the game dope trying to see how you know this came about i'm sure they're going to be talking to Uh, A lot of people involved in the 007 in the James Bond franchise, you know what I mean, for content and for references and all of those things. So be looking forward for looking forward to this game probably won't happen until 2022 at the earliest. But just to know that it's in development is a beautiful thing. Okay, sometimes you just like, look, I just want to know they're making it or working on it and I can live with that. You know, so that's what the that's pretty much what's going on with that game. And uh, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you more when I learn more, I guess. All right, let's jump back to Sony. Okay, now Sony, they're making fucking moves. Sony's making some moves, guys. And I, when I saw this, I, you know, I can't say that I didn't think they would do it, but I just didn't know it was going to be this soon. And what I'm talking about is Sony basically has a response to Xbox Game Pass. All right. So, you know how awesome Xbox Game Pass is? It's basically a video game Netflix. Okay. Um, And then the cool thing also is like if they publish a game, you get that game day one. So instead of paying the full price for the game, you get it day one. All right. So there's just a lot of dope things that goes with Game Pass. You know what I mean? It's just an excellent package. So Sony's probably been in that boardroom. They've probably been <laughs> thinking really, really hard. You know what I mean? They put down the sake. They put down the scrolls, the endo sticks. They said, look, no drugs, no alcohol. We're going to get to work and we're going to come up with some shit. All right. And they have something. Now, that's all I have for you guys. You know what I mean? All Sony is saying now is there is news to come. So I don't know if they're going to if it's going to be this year, if it's going to be early 2021, but it's got to be close because the press is talking about it. Somebody leaked something. Somebody said something. And when you talk about press and people getting a hold of things, most of the time, these companies, they purposely leak things to get the ball rolling and to get, you know, controversy swirling around it. It's all a fucking coup. It's all a plan. For the most part. And I think that really, really soon we're going to figure out what Sony is planning to do. Now, we know we have Sony. um, What is it fucking called? Uh, Where you fucking download or stream. It's basically streaming PlayStation now, which is whack, in my opinion. 
anytime you stream game, it's never, you know, sturdy enough. There's the resolution is always janky, and same thing with the gameplay is rather choppy from time, you know, a lot of the time. So I think they're going to try to adopt something in the form of what Xbox is doing. They are kind of leaning towards that with the PlayStation Five thing they got going, where you get all the first person games from yesteryear. Uh, but I, you know, there's something more to this. You know what I mean? And I'm, I'm thinking it's backwards compatibility uh, because there's so many hits, especially talking about the PlayStation 2, where they could have gone and, you know, maybe even fucked, you know, Xbox out of the water. But I've always said this. Anytime you have two companies, you know, reaching for the stars in competition, it's always better for the consumer. We're always the one who reap the benefits of that in that is the cool thing about this okay whether you're a sony guy whether you're a microsoft guy it doesn't matter we're both gonna win okay i'm getting both systems anyway so you know regardless but to know that these guys are making these moves is a beautiful thing so you know sony wasn't gonna just sit back and and you know get slapped in the face and not say anything and not do anything they were working on some shit okay and now it is coming to fruition all right Let's talk about the elephant in the motherfucking room and let's talk about Capcom. (laughs) Okay. Now, guys, I know a lot of you know me and I know a lot of you guys have heard me bitch and moan about Capcom. Okay. And rightfully so for a lot of reasons, but please don't get it twisted. Capcom is one of the top companies in the video game industry. Okay, if you look at their whole body of work, I have to admit this, whether or not, you know, they have a beautiful catalog. All right. They have some of my favorite games ever, you know, on Capcom, especially Capcom back in the day. Capcom back in the day was way better, way consumer. They were consumer friendly, put it like that. Nowadays, Capcom is always thinking about pulling out the butter on the consumer. All right. Where can I catch him or her slipping so I can pull out my butter and do strange things in the dark? That as of late, especially with their fighting franchise, (laughs) the number one fighting franchise, you know, has been taking place. And I'm going to get into that in Two Shakes of Lamb's Tale, you know, about their plans. But. Anyway, I say that to say this, I I talk a lot of shit about Capcom, but that's only because I love Capcom. All right. That's where the passion is. If I didn't give a fuck, I wouldn't waste my breath. But because I love them so much, because they have been so good in the past, it hurts that much more when they, you know, shit on us, you know, kind of like when Street Fighter five came out, you know, those are the things that I, I can't get with. But they've made incredible titles. They have a lot of dope shit in their in their catalog. And apparently now we have a leak, a huge fucking leak. It's been all over the Internet. You guys probably seen a lot of it. Basically, somebody tried to extort them. Okay, for money, they refused. They claimed that if they didn't give them what they wanted, they were going to leak their plans, their four year plan. Uh, Capcom didn't bite. They released the shit. And now we have a list of uh, an amazing prethora of games that are going to be coming out within, within the next four years, guys. And if you're a Resident Evil fan like me, then you're going to eat your heart out because <laughs> this is Resident Evil heavy. All right. Now, the games I'm naming to you, a lot of these don't have any information on them. Most of them don't. Uh, but they are listed here and they are in a plan for what they had coming. Now, I'm going to name off some of these games and I'm just going to get into some of it. Shit, shit. It's crazy. All right. Now, I'm going to start with Street Fighter, the franchise. Let's start with Street Fighter first, because I've been talking about Street Fighter. And that is my Achilles heel when it comes to Capcom. All right. The way they came out, the, the gate with Street Fighter five was just it was fucking shameful. Okay, these motherfuckers just I mean, they pulled out a 18 wheeler and unloaded nothing but tubs and pallets and pallets and pallets of fucking warm butter. It wasn't even cold and it wasn't even solid form. The shit came out of the truck warm and fucking liquidy. 
All right. Because they knew they were going to fuck millions of people. And they did. They did just that. So <laughs> some announcements on some upcoming Street Fighter games. We all know they're working on Street Fighter six. Most of us who are in the fighting community. Um, yes, this is a thing, guys. Street Fighter six is in the works right now, and it is slated to come out third quarter of twenty twenty two. So we still have a little ways. We have damn near. We, we have about a year. OK, easily um, for this game. All right. Now, this is what like gets me. OK, now, you know, I'm a Street Fighter guy like most of us. And, you know, I've always wondered, like, what when they come out with six, what are we, what are we going to get? Are we going to get eight characters? You know, no arcade mode. How are they going to do that? And that's still a mystery. But this may tell you something. This may give you an indication of how much butter they're willing to use on consumers. OK, because there's two other Street Fighter games coming out. OK, I mentioned the first one, which was Street Fighter six coming out third quarter 2022. There's another Street Fighter. And guess what? It's called Super Street Fighter six. And that comes out in the fourth quarter of 2023. So just pretty much a year later. OK. And that's not all, folks. We have one more Street Fighter game, and this one is Ultra Street Fighter six. And this is fourth quarter 2024. So damn near 2025. All right. Now, here's my issue with this shit. Here's my issue with it. Why don't you just put out Ultra Street Fighter six from day one? And then build on that. Make that your killer instinct. Make that work like those type of games where you buy the game, you release updates and characters, you know, whenever you see fit and there you go. But don't put out, don't make 12 cookies. Okay. All baked at the same time and then give us six of those cookies and say, enjoy the game, enjoy the cookies. And then a year later, Hey, we got three more cookies. And you know, when you could have put all of this shit in the first one and elaborate on that afterwards. OK, you alienate a lot of people when you do that. Yes, of course, a lot of people are going to jump on and, you know, they're smart. They're not they're not stupid. They're in these boardrooms. They're smoking their sherm. They're smoking their endo sticks. They're drinking their sake. They're doing all this and they're huddled up and they're thinking, you know, we can milk them for this. Everybody's going to jump on because of Street Fighter six and it's, you know, it's the brand new Street Fighter game. So, of course, a lot of people are going to get there and then everybody else will come later when, oh, we got the first, you know, we got the first update or whatever. So what is oh, we got more characters and so on and so forth. That's how they did me. OK, I, I just I don't know, man, what's the Street Fighter thing. Am I going to play it? I'm going to I'm going to peep it out and see. I mean, like I said, I'm a Street Fighter guy. I have Ken and Sakura sitting in my man cave right now, staring at me as we speak. I'm a Street Fighter guy. Love the franchise. But, you know, and I'm probably going to end up buying Street Fighter six. I'm not I'm not going to lie to myself, um, but they still have a lot to prove, man. They really do. And that's just for that's for a whole nother podcast, a whole nother story. But, you know, the what makes Capcom so dope is that they don't just have one game, one entity. They have many and some are my favorites. OK, I'll, and I'll get to one of those in a second. But Resident Evil, we all know Resident Evil 8 is coming out, but we didn't know there was going to be a demo. OK, so there's actually going to be a demo that everybody can partake in waiting on that gracefully. But there's another Resident Evil remake being made. OK, yes, another remake. Now, if you guys don't remember, there was a twenty dollar Resident Evil remake that was done years back. I want to say twenty seventeen, maybe could be twenty eighteen. Um, but anyway, it came out and it, it was beautiful, but they're doing a complete remake. All right. The other one was a facelift. It was pretty much the same engine and all of that. This was going to be a brand new game. It's still going to be Resident Evil, but it's just going to be made up, made from the ground up. And it's slated for the fourth quarter of 2022. So I just thought you guys might be interested in that, especially all the die hard original Resident Evil games players out there. OK, now here's one that fucked me up. Here's one that I'm not going to lie to you. I, I would have never guessed. It, there's a couple on this list, but here's one of them. <laughs> Final Fight. If you guys don't know about Final Fight, what Final Fight is, it's a fucking side scroller beat em up. Can't make this shit up, guys. 
I played plenty of this shit back in the day, man, on the Sega and Super Nintendo and shit. We played it. Played it at the arcades. Final fight. Second quarter 2024. It's still a ways away, but I'm anxious to see how they're going to do this, how the graphics is going to be 3D. Is it still going to be 2D side scroller? I don't fucking know. You know what I mean? Are they going to do something like Streets of Rage? I don't know, but I'm excited for it because I love beat em ups. So I will definitely be patiently waiting on that. Now, I just talked about a minute ago games that will fucking blow your mind remakes or games that are coming back. Here's one. Oh my God. <laughs> Think Dreamcast. Okay. I'm talking about fucking Power Stone. Power Stone is actually having a game, working on a game, and it's slated for the third quarter of 2024. It's still a long ways away, but the fact that they are even working them on this, okay, is crazy. And if you haven't experienced Power Stone, man, if you have a Dreamcast, you should have it. But if you don't, Google Power Stone. Uh, it, it was basically, in a sense, one of the first, um, one of the first Smash Brother games. It was just for the Dreamcast, and they had their own characters and stuff. So, I mean, the game is extremely fun to play. It, it, I mean, yo, my son was playing it not too long ago, and he was playing the shit out of it. And this is a fucking Dreamcast game, okay? So, I can't wait to see what they're gonna do with it. I, I'm really excited about that one, man. Especially when you get multiplayer and stuff involved in that. It can get real ridiculous. So definitely anticipating that one, guys. All right. Here's another one. And it's another Resident Evil game. It's called Resident Evil Outrage. All right. And this is coming out sooner than later. Fourth quarter 2021. I don't know what that game is about. Could it be online? It could be. I don't know. I just have the name for you. But there's Resident Evil everywhere. Okay. And in the fourth quarter of 2022, there's another Resident Evil game, my favorite of all time, and that's Resident Evil 4, the remake. We're getting a remake. I cannot wait to jump on that one. Resident Evil 4 is my shit. It, it, it'll always be the number one Resident Evil game to me. Nobody can tell me any different. And I'll challenge anyone, okay, on that. But everybody has their preferences. Some people like 2 and 3, uh, which are also very dope games in their own right. But I'm so happy they're doing a remake. It's coming very, very soon. Not too, not that soon, but soon enough. Okay. Here's another game. Mega Man Match. I don't know what this is. It's a, it could be a card game. It could be some party game or something. It doesn't sound like your typical Mega Man game, but it's coming out third quarter 2022. You know, this could be a Japanese game. Um, they call them Rock Man in Japanese. But I don't know what they're going to do with this. Um, more information when it comes available, you know, I'll keep you guys posted. But for all my Mega Man fans, that's one. OK. Uh, here's a franchise that, you know, in PlayStation two days, man, I spent so many hours with friends on weekends playing this shit. And that's Onimusha. The game is called Onimusha New Work. Uh, that's the current name for it right now. And that's slated for fourth quarter 2022. Uh, you know, I love the only Musha series, man, has so many great hours playing that. And I'm curious to see how they're going to elaborate on the gameplay, because, you know, if they stick to the same gameplay, it's not going to I don't think it's going to do very well. They need to refine the the, the way it was played, kind of like the tanky controls, the Resident Evil controls. And when they fix that, you know, we'll be cooking with Crisco. So it, it, it's definitely going to be fun to see how they um, how they take the game. And use, you know, put it in current events, not current events. What am I saying? Basically make it more streamlined for today's standard is what I'm saying. So I'm anxious to see how that's going to work. I really am. I want to see how that's going to work. Excuse me real quick, guys. My mouth is dry. I've been drinking wine. I'm going to take a sip. Uh, give me one second. Mm. Mm. Okay, my bad. Sorry about that. Anyway, let's move on to all my Monster Hunter fans. There is a Monster Hunter 6 in development right now. That is the only game that I don't have a release date window for. But it is in development. You should have known Capcom was going <laughs> to stick to this franchise. It's very popular. It's a franchise and it's always been. And the last Monster Hunter game was crazy. So... I'm sure, you know, there were going to be people who were going to fuck with it. So they'd be, you know, they'd be tripping 
they definitely be drinking the sake if they did not put this game in the mix. It's amazing, though, all these all these plans for these games. You know, it may be one or two of these games that don't don't work out. They never come to fruition behind production values, or maybe there's a disagreement behind, you know, two major heads, you know, within the industry and can't come to an agreement or something. These backdoor things, these things always happen. These are the reasons why some games happen and you never knew about it. And some games didn't happen. And that was the reason why. So there's a lot of politics going on in a lot of this stuff, but majority of these games will probably get done and probably be greenlit. But it's amazing what these companies are hiding from us. Like even in today's society where everybody's, you know, now, now, now we need our information. You know, as you can see, we we got four years up to four years worth of what Capcom is doing now. So it's up to them to change that up a little bit or I don't know what they're going to do. But their information is out here and it's good to know, though. It really is good to know. Because I'm going to talk about the last game and the last game that I am extremely excited about that I cannot believe they are working on. Well, I can in a sense because, I, you know, but, you know, it's an RPG. It's one of my favorite RPGs. And I'm talking about Dragon's Dogma. They are working on Jack Dragon's Dogma, too. And that's slated for the second quarter of 2022. OK, so not that far away. And we're, they skipped, they literally skipped the PlayStation 4, okay, and went to the 5, all right? Now, they did make a fucking remake, not a remake, an HD version, and I have that for the PS4. But, you know, the PS5, a, 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 a game made from the ground up, a Dragon's Dogma game, yo, cannot fucking wait. And we never got in the States, we never got a Dragon's Dogma online. Now, Japan, they got that. And I was so pissed and so envious of them because of that. That was one of the games I really wanted to play. But, you know, we had to deal with it. But hopefully we get some online play on this one. And that remedies all of that. But even if they don't, don't do it online and they just make it a, a RPG, open world RPG, I'm completely fine with that. Because like I said, those are my type of games. And Dragon's Dogma is in my top 10 RPGs of all time. My top 10. I don't know about yours, but mine for sure. Uh, and, and that's it. Th- those are the games that are coming from Capcom. Those are the leaks. You know what I mean? It's a four year plan. Uh, see a lot of this changing, maybe, you know, some of the dates, if anything. But for the most part, I think most of these games are going to come out. And, you know, it's beautiful, simply delicious. OK, just like this wine I just had a sip of. But. That is the information, guys. That is going to do it for the fucking show. I want to thank everybody for listening, for streaming, for coming out and taking part in this activity. You guys are the best. I love you dearly, especially all of my fans and listeners who've been down from day fucking one. And I hope all the new listeners are coming and listening to this show. I hope you guys come back Monday and every Monday after that. Like I said before, guys, we do this shit on every Monday, same bad time, same bad channel. Monday morning, you can catch it. Okay. Usually you can catch it anywhere from, you know, five in the morning, as early as five in the morning, you can get it. So, you know, just look out for it. And I want to reiterate what I said earlier in the show um, for a lot of you guys. Merch is coming. Merch is on the way. Also, the website, studiomacgyver.com is on the way where you can get everything uh, Studio MacGyver. You can get the podcast there. You can get all the other ish, all the other platforms that I'm on the Facebook page, you can get uh, the Instagram, all those things, guys, it will be there for you at your disposal. Okay. And you can even show some love and support the show. I, I'm, I'm, you know, whether it be a dollar, whether it be 10, whatever, you know what I mean? If you really dig in the show and you want to show some love and just show a little support that will be available as well. So, but that all being said, Social media right now, you can holler at me on Twitter at Studio MacGyver. You can also get at me on Instagram at Studio MacGyver 79. Check out the Facebook page. That's Studio MacGyver as well. Check out the YouTube channel. That's Studio MacGyver TV. Yeah, man, I'm everywhere. <laughs> I'm everywhere. Get ready for that cyberpunk shit, though. Right now, I'm just doing my podcast, um, uploading those. But I have a lot of videos, hundreds of videos on other things talking about Dragon Ball discussions on things of that nature. And you can check some of those out too. But 
Uh, I do plan on doing some stuff with the channel with the cyberpunk. So definitely get ready for that. And I might have a little bit of some Valhalla stuff. I've been recording a little bit of footage on some of these fights, man, you know, just for shits and giggles. So those will be up, you know, whenever, but they'll be coming. So, yeah, man, hope you guys enjoyed the show one more time. I love you and I'm out. This is Studio MacGyver and you have been listening to Studio MacGyver's Dragon Ball in the Video Game Podcast. See you next time.